All right, so I just bought some UGI. <clears throat> Not much. I bought 100 shares. Yeah, 100 shares. And uh, I sold some of my VTV to get this. UGI is actually a, uh, uh, a mid cap, so less than $10 billion in market cap. But I tell you, man, um, I just <laughs> – look, energy to do more. Energy. Hmm, interesting. UGI Corp. I have no clue. If you should buy it, I don't know. I don't care. Uh, but natural gas. Interesting. Natural gas and electric utility. Hmm. Global LPG. Amerigas. Huh. I buy a lot of America gas. A lot of uh, retail, uh, nation's largest retail propane distribution. Distribution of liquefied petroleum gas and energy market. And look what I just happen to have on. I love pipelines, as you should too, uh, because you like to use energy. Uh, anyway, so I imagine these, all right, here we go, 4681 is the price. Uh, crude oil is up to 88 bucks a barrel. Natural, can we get a thing of natural gas that doesn't let us in propane in terms of, uh, hold on a second. So here's a stock of UGI, um, and you can see this trade out 4680. What I want to show you, though, is uh, it got a 3% dividend yield. I did buy it in an IRA. I just uh, basically, most of my money is still in my IRA. I'm moving to Roth, moving to Roth, but the bulk of my portfolio is still my IRA. But 3% yield, uh, you can see right here, does it show us uh, market cap, $9 billion. It's a mid cap. So mid cap should not be in the VTV that I own. But look at that, earnings per share, six seventy nine. dollars Now, the Ford PE, I imagine they're expecting uh, earnings. Had they took a, probably they, they got lucky last year. So that's why they're they're trailing 12 months earnings per share. The PE ratio is so low. Still, 14 is pretty freaking low, dudes. 14. All right. And you still get a dividend as well. And you know something about natural gas? Natural gas is green, according to the EU now, which I love. So, you know me, a big fan of natural gas. And look, the stock hasn't done anything since 2017. It was right here at, uh, I mean, basically it's, it's had done nothing for the last five years. I don't think utility stocks as a whole has done anything. So let's keep going back to UGI. Let's see how woke they are. Someone, because I did a thing on Steelcase, and someone said, why'd you pick them? I said, because I did. But let's see how look. I imagine these guys are woke uh, as well. But let's see. At least on the front page, they don't have, our diversity statement and all that crap, but I imagine they probably do in here. Let's see. Uh, hey, well, so far so good. I don't see anything about diversity and all that crap like Steelcase had. Uh, it's in here, I guarantee. But let's stay at least not on the front two pages. Natural gas. All right, so they're not afraid of natural gas, which is good. Oh, USA baby. Uh, Three million customers. 11,000 employees. I love the U.S. Isn't that just a thing of beauty? Europe. <laughs> U.S. Yes. Europe. <laughs> U.S. Yes. USA in your face. All right. So far, so good. I'm digging it. Uh, let's see here. So our a strategy, our about UGI. Let's do the values. Uh, vision, values, safety, respect, integrity, sustainability, reliability. Right. Reliable, look, sustainability is great, but if you don't have reliable energy, you're off, you're screwed. All right, ES, there we go, ESG is right there. <laughs> I don't know, I missed it. Oh, boy, uh, ESG. Uh, corporate sustainability, our planet, the resources. Um, uh, they plan on reducing greenhouse gas emissions by 55% over the next five years. Let's go to how they're going to do that here. Go down to number one, uses 2020 as the baseline, all right? So they're going to reduce it. Oh, net zero carbon. You know why? They're going to plant trees. I don't know what they're going to do, but the whole thing is just a scam. Uh, but anyway, so uh, and uh, both these factors propel UGI forward in its long-term mission aligned with the Paris Climate Accord of net zero carbon emissions by 2050. Uh, and here's a CEO, Roger Perot. I imagine it's French. Is this a French company? I don't know, but... Uh, the planet. All right, look, ESG is in this stuff. You can't. It just is what it is. Um, sustainability reports. It's it's all fake. But they got to play it. I get it. One hundred percent. Our business. Uh, let's see. 
three, 34 consecutive years increasing dividends, uh, 30, 137 years of paying dividends, miles of midstream pipeline. Oh, I love it. Miles utility system gas, 3 million customers. All right. Uh, 2 billion retail LPG uh, gallons. All right, let's follow. We see for what's up with that. <laughs> so easy to make fun of these guys we got this unicorn farting uh, rainbows on solar panels with an eu flag u.s natural nuclear now green energy yep uh, furious eu moves ahead to label g gas and nuclear as green i love it um green washing they're calling it so this is fantastic big fan long time first time i love that they're doing this uh investor group warns uh, eu against labeling investments as green um how they find around this cares uh u.s natural gas is saving oh, this is from newsweek actually so this must be an opinion piece u.s natural gas is saying europe saving europe from its own shenanigans yeah opinion all right right on um i'm not gonna read it here but so far so good so let me just show you something else too by the way usgs the u.s uh geo, geo geographical geo like geological uh survey um, the USGS has completed an oil and gas estimate for the back end of Three Forks Formation in the Williston of Montana in North Dakota. The estimate includes 4.3 billion barrels of unconventional oil and 4.9 trillion cubic feet of natural gas in those two formations alone. The assessment updates the 2013 USGS in the Williston basis. Um, <laughs> Natural gas is here to stay, my friends, and it gets it only the the hits just keep on coming. The good hits. Well, the back end, um, uh, that's not even including this right here. USGS identifies largest continuous oil and gas resource potential ever, and that's in Texas and New Mexico. Uh, the Department of Interior announced that the Wolf Camp Shale and overlying Bone Spring Formation, the Delaware Basin portion of the Texas and New Mexico's Permian Basin. Contain an extra, an estimated mean of 46 billion barrels of oil, 280 trillion cubic feet of natural gas, and 20 billions of barrels of natural gas liquids, according to the assessment by USGS. This estimate is for continuous unconventional oil and consists of undiscovered, technically recoverable resources. Uh, Christmas came a few weeks early, says. The old interior secretary and the Trumps are Ryan Zink. American strength through America flows through American energy. Energy, as it turns out, we have lots of American energy. In the 1980s, during my time in the petroleum business, the Permian and similar mature basins were not considered viable for producing large new recoverable resources. Today, thanks to advances in technology, the Permian Basin continues to impress in terms of resource potential. Uh, <laughs> The largest ever assessment of accessible, accessible oil and gas. Someone's going to do this. Might be UGI, it might be others, I don't know. But if you think natural gas is going away, you're freaking nuts, dude. Nuts. Remember, we love pipelines. That's why I buy them. So people buy it for Teslas for future growth. And Tesla has no earnings. Relative to the, they have no earnings. I buy gas companies for future growth who already has earnings who already are paying dividends because i know we need it and we're gonna get it it's just the way it's gotta be